Do you want to see it? <laughs> Wait, look. Oh my god, look at the light and how it literally just comes through the green. I'm a Filipino American. My parents were immigrants, and so I'm the first in the family to be born on U.S. soil. I was born into like a really strict religious household. I stood out in school, like, oh, that girl, she doesn't, she doesn't pledge to the flag. Like, oh, she doesn't celebrate birthdays. Or I was always that kid in the corner who could not participate. I would get teased and bullied so much as a kid, like, oh, that that girl, like. She's not one of us. Like, no place was safe for me. So essentially, the camera became my safe space. It was my way of making sense of my reality and the world around me. And it was a way for me to process what I was going through at such a young age. Because at the time, I didn't have the words for it. But at least I could film something <laughs> that helped me to understand just a little bit. What? What secret? What? Who is this? My first cell phone was a pink Sony Ericsson and it was the first time that some sort of technology had like a camera. I used to use it to just vlog, like just my day-to-day -day life. I don't know, I just loved it. And I begged my mom <laughs> for a camera. I was like, I just want a camera. Like, and that was my first real big girl camera. I think at a young age, I kind of already had this awareness of society and the ugliness of it. I was like filming stories about child abuse and like cyberbullying. I think that's why the camera became, that's why like I always have it with me. Even till this day, it's like I'm still healing almost. Like I'm still processing what all of that was. Oh, Anak, help me. Ma, what is this? Oh, it's your internship. Look, I got you this new scrubs, your name tag. Ma? Anak, what's wrong? Ma, I don't want any of this. What? What did you say? Jana, don't tell this? me. This? Ma, this is what you want. Yes, because I am your mother. I know what's best for you. In the Filipino culture, like all the moms want their children to become nurses and successful doctors and lawyers. So in the story, I kind of made a nod to that because my mom also had the same dream for me. Something stable, something secure. She's convinced her mom that she's going to nursing, you know, she's studying, she's getting her degree. But in reality, she's not. She's pursuing her dream. She's doing it in secret. She's in photography class pursuing her art. And so that's kind of what I did growing up. Anything that involved the camera, I was doing after school. Mmm. Mm. 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 That's what films help me to do, is to just Thanks, Ma. have that hope for something that's possible. Mm -hmm. I think my style has evolved over the years, but I've always gravitated to a softer, dreamier look. Filmmaking is kind of a dreamscape for me. I just like to capture life as beautifully as I can. I like things to be earthy and warm. I even emulate that color in my own living space. The earth tones, the greens, the oranges, and the blues, the browns, the wood, because it gave me a sense of warmth, a sense of comfort. For me, mise-en-scene, the scene itself, how it looks in real life matters for me because I can't bring greens where greens don't exist. <laughs> so when I'm out filming, I'm already looking for textures in nature. I'm looking for where the colors are the richest, where the textures have depth, 
and then if it's not there I try to create it myself so like I'll bring in plants or like hang tapestries in like the walls and then in post when I'm finalizing the film I'll throw it into DaVinci Resolve and I start color grading it that's where I bring out the greens and the warmth and the oranges I've always loved the orange and teal look <laughs> Your training for Mary Monarch began when you were born. On the Kahua Ka'i film, I was one of the camera operators alongside Gerard Elmore and Kao Kosaki. On that film, all we had was just the small red camera, the red Gemini, but it was super run and gun. Like we were just hand holding that. We were just, we were getting in there and we were running around and like, sometimes we'll switch off cameras and like, you take the gimbal and you take this setup and I'll take this setup and I'll film from this angle. But, oh my gosh, it was such a beautiful experience. And we just ran That's with them in the volcanoes or like out at dark at 5 a.m. If we're doing a blessing, you we were in there. Yeah. <laughs> On Crystal Backey's film, Sincerely K, it was a visual poetry of her life story. Crystal wanted it to be as organic as possible, like kind of like we were in the scene with the characters. They weren't actors and we weren't camera operators, but we were with them, kind of experiencing life with them. It was a setup similar to this. It was just this small camera with like a shot, like a shotgun road mic, and we were just in there, just capturing things as they happened. We did prioritize the character's emotions, the stillness, um, the quietness in those moments. I think what I loved most was the fact that there was almost no dialogue at all. So it really challenged me as a filmmaker. How do I visually communicate what's happening without telling people what's happening? How do you communicate with just the eyes, with just the mouth, with just the face? I just see myself creating work that's honest, that's empathetic. Because for me, what I prioritize the most is human connection and human understanding. The reality of what life looks like, but what life could be like. I see myself doing this for a very long time. <laughs> Thank you.